All right, everybody, good evening and welcome to the town board of the town of Austin work session for Tuesday, November 1st, 2022. Please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And he's done a lot of terms we had today. Happy birthday, Mark. Um, call to order. No, we don't have to do that. Um, all right, so we have our work session this evening, and I'm going to start off with a few announcements. This Thursday, November 3rd at 6 p.m., join us for the Austin Shoreline Revitalization Community Meeting at the Austin Community Center, 95 Broadway, to share feedback on the draft shoreline improvements. We look forward to hearing your input and um, to hear how you think we can improve the waterfront to reflect your values and priorities. An interpreter and translated materials will be available for Spanish speakers. Learn more about this project and its importance at the greenaustin.org website, greenaustin.org slash shoreline dash resiliency. Next Thursday, November 10th, Sustainable Westchester will be holding a forum entitled Exploring Peaker Power Plants, uh, Inequities and Solutions via Zoom at 7 p.m. Learn more about Peaker Power Plants, what they are, how they impact our communities, and hear from local groups about their work to reduce our reliance on Peaker plant Power Plants and take action by signing up for Grid Rewards Demand Response Program to make a difference in your home. I have done this and I have saved money because I've turned off certain types of uh, power sources at peak power. So you can do it. We have shared the link to register for this webinar in my supervisor's update. These programs remind us of the importance of environmental protection. Westchester County government recently released an excellent video reminding everyone to flip over your ballots when you go to vote in this year's election. The flip side of the ballot contains a question about whether or not to pass New York's Clean Water, Clean Air, and Green Jobs Environmental Bond Act. If yes wins, the $4.2 billion bond act will fund restoration and flood risk reduction, climate change mitigation, open space land conservation, recreation and water quality improvement, and resilient infrastructure. We have shared the video and my supervisor's update. The town board has issued a resolution in support of the Environmental Bond Act, and I recently wrote a letter to the editor also in support of it. Please do your research before you go to vote. I was at a rally today to talk about the Bond Act, and we had labor in the house as well as um, some of our uh, leaders in Hudson Valley Economic Development Council. Apparently, for every $1 invested in environmental protections, you benefit the economy by um, with seven dollars of economic benefit. So that's pretty pretty amazing. And we had a lot of labor support too, which is also great for those green jobs, well-paying union jobs. Early voting has begun for the 2022 general election and will continue through Sunday, November 6th. You can vote at any early voting location in Westchester County. And the location right here in Austin is the Joseph G. Caputo Community Center at 95 Broadway. Yep, you still have 25 minutes to get there this evening. Wednesday, November 2nd and Friday, November 4th, voting will take place from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. On Thursday, November 3rd, from noon to 8 p.m. And on Saturday, November 5th and Sunday, November 6th, from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Lots of options. You don't have to wait to the last minute. You don't have to chance that there are going to be long lines. You can go any day and you can also vote any place again in Westchester County. They will print out your ballot for you if they have early voting available at those locations. On election day, Tuesday, November 8th, you can vote at your usual voting location from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. 
Learn more about early voting and your election day polling site by visiting the Westchester County Board of Elections website at citizenparticipation.westchestergov.com. Cold and flu season is upon us. You can still hear my lingering laryngitis from last week. Make sure to get your flu shot to be protected against the flu this season. Yes, I did get mine. In addition to the new COVID-19 booster, which protects against the original strain and the Omicron strain of the virus, I did get that also at OVAC, and hopefully a few of you have also too. COVID vaccines are offered at OVAC on Fridays. Walk-ins are welcome, but appointments are appreciated and preferred. Make your appointment at austinvac.org. That's B-A-C, austinvac.org. OVAC is not yet offering flu vaccines, but flu vaccines are available locally at most pharmacies and healthcare providers. It is also getting to that time of year when we switch our thermostats back to heat. The New York Public Service Commission is expecting heating costs to rise by at least 20% this winter, which will undoubtedly be a huge burden for so many of us in our households. New York State Home Energy Assistance Program, also known as HEAP, can help eligible households with assistance to pay their energy bills this winter. Learn more about this program and other ways to reduce your heating costs by visiting www.ny.gov slash heat. Earlier today, I participated in a press conference with County Executive George Latimer to announce that Westchester County will have a sales tax holiday on home heating fuel. We know all of these programs will go a long way to help families keep their homes warm through the winter months and not have to choose between heating your home and not getting the bag of groceries. Thank you so much to Governor Kathy Hochul and County Executive George Latimer for your leadership providing real assistance that will help New Yorkers here in Westchester and across the state. We may not be able to uh, fix inflation, but there's lots of things we can do to help people during these hard times. And that's what government is doing for us and for you. Uh, the Risco's, uh, Risco Music, Mike and Mary and Risco are collecting new hats and gloves for O Prime. And you can bring them next week to Maya Riviera on the 9th of November for their Rock You showcase of their rock bands where you can drop off those new hats and gloves. And we thank them for their community support. That is it for my announcements. Are there any others? And I guess we talk about Veterans Day because we're not probably going to be talking about there. It's going to be a Veterans Day ceremony on the 11th, Veterans Day, at Nelson Park at 11 a.m. And we welcome everybody to join us for the annual Veterans Day celebration. And we thank Michael G. O'Connor and the Centralized Thank you. Centralized Committee of War Veterans. Sometimes forget all of the words in the right order um, for their annual um, help with all of our veterans uh, ceremonies and recognitions. And we are so grateful for all of those who have um, put themselves on the line for our country and our democracy. And I think that's it for my announcements. Again, nobody else has any other announcements. No, no, no. We can just dive right into work session. But first, we are very pleased to have our highway and cemetery superintendent, Mr. <laughs> Pete Connolly, here with us for a two departmental reports, I guess. Correct. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us here in person. Nice We're to so be glad. here in person again. Yeah. Um, I turned right instead of left when I came in. No, <laughs> so long. So um, my quarterly report, uh, what has been going on in the highway department uh, over the last, I, you know, summer months and even beyond. Um, big project was completed, uh, McCarthy Drive, of course, it, it turned out great. Um, it was a uh, it was a tough project. Uh, kudos go to uh, town engineer Paul Frioli staying on top of it. And um, in the long run, it was it was a long haul, but it, it turned out very, very nice. So uh, it was nice to see that completed. Um, of course, the first phase of Morningside Drive was uh, paved and curb work uh, last year. And uh, this year, uh, last year it got uh, too cold in November to uh, safely you know, complete the paving of that. The rest of Morningside and Morningside Court 
And we uh, completed that this summer and also Bridgeview Drive. So that ties in that area real nice. And that came out also uh, great. Um, for the first time uh, during the month of July, we, uh, we rented a vac vacuum truck. This ties in with uh, the environmental concerns and we cleaned uh, all our 620 catch basins throughout the town with that vac. It's a new piece of equipment and uh, you know, we were able to really bang it out. So uh, that turned out well. Um, we just recently replaced about a thousand feet of guardrail, which was in uh, poor condition on Croton Dam Road and Morningside Drive. Um, storm drainage projects um, completed on uh, Cedar Lane, Ganong and Pheasant Ridge Road. Uh, as far as the buildings are concerned, where we are, we uh, had a new fire alarm system installed, protect our vehicles and uh, office trailers. God forbid something happens. And um, new lighting was installed in the uh, mechanics repair garage recently, and um, the roof was uh, patched. But uh, I think, as you know, that roof has to be replaced, and we're looking to rebid again in the spring. Uh, so we hope to get that done. It was leaking at about four spots. Uh, switching over to our um, storage lift stations, always a good subject, right? Um, those wet well air bubblers, uh, uh, which were installed at four of our lift stations are uh, performing, uh, performing as designed. Uh, it cuts down on the need to have the stations clean about three or four times a year which gets a little expensive. And next year I'll be looking to inst have installed uh, maybe four more. So uh, that'll put us over that hump. So just as a note, you know, we take uh, very seriously our maintenance of our uh, sewer lift stations. Uh, there's 11 of them. Um, they're monitored every day by an alarm company, uh, serviced by a professional pump vendor once a month. And the emergency standby generators are serviced once a year and repaired and uh, uh, repaired as needed. So, just last week, uh, we received a new piece of equipment, our new uh, leaf vacuum machine. This replaces uh, one that was 20 years old. Um, and just last week, we began picking up uh, roadside leaves. And we will continue to do that until the end of the year, weather permitting. Um, just rake them out to the curb, not in the road, to keep our catch basins clear. And um, you could always bag them, and that would continue year round every Friday. And just as a reminder, uh, equipment wise, speaking of equipment, uh, we have two Freightliner dump trucks still on order, and I hope to receive them next year. And we have been in discussions with sales representatives for purchasing an electric packer truck, um, which we use for our organic yard waste once a week. And this vehicle hopefully will replace our current truck, which is 30 years old. Um, currently we're closing in on uh, completing the repainting of uh, road striping throughout the town this year. I think we just had the double yellow lines to paint. Our employees attended uh, safety training last uh, over the last two weeks for uh, confined space awareness, hazardous materials and personal protection equipment. And we have scheduled a snow plowing operations course for November 9th. It's offered by Cornell Local Roads Program. And they're gonna come to us and uh, parks, cemetery workers and highway who also plow during storms um, are asked to attend. And they even provide the lunch, so it's not there. Is that where they talk about how not to use so much salt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, amounts, uh, you know, setting your salt spreader or, you know, uh, out of the truck, the controls and all that, depending on the temperature and what have you in the road conditions. Correct. So speaking of uh, snow or mechanics, uh, they're prepping our snow removal equipment and uh, our salt storage uh, shed is full, ready for the season. Something we should know about. 
Yeah. No, I, I form is more than that. I don't know. I'll be a couple years ago. I hope there's nothing. I hope it stays in the shed. Um, of course, we continue our regular maintenance duties, uh, road sweeping, road repairs, uh, grass cutting, uh, yard waste pickup, uh, utility uh, markouts, catch basin repairs, and uh, vehicle maintenance. And before you move to cemetery, do you have any update from ComEd about the, the areas that they're working on? Over on, on 134, I spoke with the um, in person with the construction manager who was on site. And he said they were going to be out of there by the end of the month, but that, that hasn't happened, meaning I told her. Yes. So, but um, a lot of the road plates have been removed. It's not that many left. So I think that's um, just house service connections that they have a few to complete. So um, I think they did get underneath 9A by uh, boring. So uh, awesome. yeah, and um, they did um, take care of the culvert that they ran into installing the main. They couldn't get around the culvert and I had to wait for a special company to come in to underneath. So, so hopefully, um, I did go by there today and it's still working. So, but um, I'll stay on them this week. Let's see. How much um, does the bubbler save us on maintenance? On, uh, do we cut out all makes? Not all makes. Um, it would be a back back company um, that came in and cleaned it. And um, actually, with the proper safety equipment, a man goes down in the wells, he cleans all the uh, material that are on the floats and on the pumps itself. And that, that material has to be vacuumed out at the same time. So each each time it's about three thousand dollars that, that he does. And we and we try to he goes out with one of our mechanics and we try to get that done within a day's day's time. So the bubbler system has saved us how often they come? Uh at least three times a year, maybe four. So each, each station is different, and then them COVID with every COVID with everybody home. You know, there was more demand. So I'm just saying, like, you know, did we used to do it every month and now we only have to do it, you know, every other month because we love it? We, or... we haven't done it this year since on uh, those stations. That we haven't we, needed to no, go in and clean it no. up. So it saved us all four right. times of me. Right. right. There, was, there was one that's getting close, which we don't have the bubbler in. And so we get a monthly, a monthly report from the pump vendor. And he explains what he did there, what he's what he found wrong, and he corrects that. And then he also says, you know, this station needs cleaning. Maybe you want to, you know, call the back company. Okay. So, yeah. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Any other questions about that? Or we get into right. So on the cemetery side, um, to date there have been 50, 59 internments at Dale. And uh, since the cemetery began, it's 12,864, which is uh, 1918 um, We processed 50 new deeds there, which means 50 uh, graves, new graves were sold so far this year. Um, of course, we pour the uh, foundations for the monuments. Uh, the, the monument companies uh, put in an order and um, we pour the concrete itself. And uh, we are up to date on that, and probably about uh, 40 foundations over the course of the year. So all them, all all of those have been completed, and uh, pretty soon we won't do any more of them until spring with the cold weather. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we received our uh, new Bobcat utility vehicle. That's uh, really the workhorse of the cemetery. It fits um, between the the aisles, you know, the rows of uh, monuments. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and. Uh, that's probably used every every day and uh the other one was about nine years old and it was just showing signs so we wanted you know being such an important piece of equipment uh that's ordered and we're going to have uh, lots of years for that to use so do you get a new body on the back or you can use the one that you have of the so which one the bobcat comes with a little... yeah with the little yeah so when they prepare a grave, they're actually putting dirt in that. Right. Yes, yeah, so they have to remove it for them because you, you know, they're adding the casket. And uh, so that's that can fit in between the stones and, and all the rows. So yeah, 
And then, of course, they do drive around with it and they go down and cut grass or trim or whatever they have to do. So, yeah, it's a very important piece of equipment. It's going to come in handy. Uh, our, our tree maintenance at Dale and Sparta has been completed for the year. Um, and this year, our ongoing uh, monument repair project is going on for maybe six or seven years uh, with steward preservation. Uh, we concentrated on uh, Sparta Cemetery this year. Um, Dale Cemetery probably has another season in it yet. Uh, those marble, white marble headstones are the easiest ones to break when they fall. And uh, either by some of them pushing them or they, they do walk on the hills, believe it or not, over time with frost. So they might just fall yeah. themselves. Do you think they see ghosts? It's just them walking. What? <laughs> Halloween? <laughs> you said the monuments walk. They, they, they do. That's, that's a term this professional will use. Um, you know, I said, I, you know. Uh, I, you know, I, you know, I, you know, I don't remember that one being down. Oh, you'd be surprised. So they must be doing it at night. I, I don't know, but yeah. Um, and uh, the cemetery personnel, they continue with their regular duties, of course, as uh, burial preparation and uh, during the services, grass cutting, leaf removal, throwing the foundations along with our partners in the, in the parks department and the gravesite restoration. And um, I'd also like to thank uh, the Austin Historical Cemetery Conservancy for their efforts in, in making our cemeteries, you know, a place that, that you like to visit and take a walk on a heritage trail. And they do work also in uh, Sparta. Yeah. And Dale, too. Right? And Dale. Yeah, uh, yes, Dale, Dale yeah, that's so. where the heritage trail is. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, Any questions for the Mr. Was a great report. Thank you so much for all the work. It's uh, great to hear how much um, you've accomplished and you've done such a good job of overseeing all of the different um, aspects of both the highway and the cemetery. And uh, I'm sure that all of those who uh, live in Austin visit our visit and travel our roads are appreciative, especially when they drive down that smooth one side drive or hard to drive it's a little too fast sometimes but we're, we're happy we're happy for uh for the not the not uh mm -hmm. not bumping us mm -hmm. yeah. straight to party else all that good stuff right save the front end and yeah all great fantastic thank you thank you and thanks to your crew thank you thank you uh let's see I mean, you can stay. You're welcome to stay. No, I'm just going to watch it all again. Yeah. <laughs> the World Series. <laughs> Maybe you want to stay for our discussion on uh, e the e bike book. Oh, yeah. of course. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Val. Hey, Val. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, so next up, we are discussing our proposed local law to regulate bikes, e bikes, and e scooters. E stands for electric. I'm going to turn it over to our town council to speak on the down and to start us off. Well, really, there's um, there's one primary item that's outstanding. Um, the board last discussed this at your October 18th board session. Um, and after that, one of the main issues was um, how to handle the fact that a lot of what is was previously um, prescribed for in this law is actually regulated at the state level. And so there are there are a lot of things that the town board doesn't really have control over in terms of um, how it's enforced, uh, what the rules are basically. So with direction from the board, I revised the law and that was circulated a couple of weeks ago. Um, and what I did was I took out pretty much um, most of the references to rules and regulations that are governed at the state level and just focused on um, the items that are subject to local control. Um, but I also made very clear and explicit reference to the vehicle and traffic law, Article 34 and Article 34A, which regulate e bikes and bikes, e bikes and e scooters, respectively. Um, <clears throat> but one question that I had for the board was whether you were 
comfortable with the way it's currently drafted, or if you would like there to be a more clear delineation about what's in the state law. Um, one thing I had suggested was potentially including the table of contents from the state law um, that pretty much lists the title of every section of the law. So that, um, because again, the intent was to make this information more accessible to people who may go to the town code as opposed to sifting through, you know, vehicle traffic law. Um, so one thing we could do if you wanted was to include the table of contents so that anyone reviewing it could see what the subject matter was of each of the provisions. Um, or if you were just comfortable with having the article of the state law reference in the code itself. I think I prefer to have the state the uh, contents so that people can kind of see that there's something referring to this, to that, to the, to the other, so that they understand there's a regulation to do with, you know, all those different items um, and that they might have to go look that up before they feel very confident that they're not breaking a law. <laughs> I know I ask people that we can't do a direct link to it, right? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I mean, not, you know, it, not as far as I'm aware from ECODE. The only thing I've seen in ECODE is if you if you can cross reference other sections of the code itself. So, for instance, you know, if you have a zoning code provision that also applies to the building code, you could say you could cross reference and then you can link to that. I have not personally seen a situation where you can hyperlink to to state law or the laws of other municipalities generally. I guess not to other municipalities, but it would make sense to state law. Well, I mean municipalities like if it's county law oh, or you know, yeah, if it's yeah. something where um it's oh. it, yeah, if it's something that um no, there would I can't yeah. imagine a situation where there would be a reason to cross-reference another town law. Right. Um, but I'm saying situations sure. where you know, a lot of our tax code comes from what the county has right. legislated. So, but I, I personally have not seen that, and I'm I'm not even sure logistically how that would work. Anybody else? Yeah, I mean, I just like to give the public as much information as we can and guide them in the right direction to get whatever information they need. So. Yeah, it should be easily accessible. If it's not. I mean, the other thing to keep in mind, you know, is that this has always been the law, right? right. <laughs> Before and after this exists, people are presumed to know what the law is and abide by it. Um, so, you know, it's not necessarily the town board's responsibility. I understand that in enacting this legislation, it, part of it is to make that information as accessible to the public as possible. And so this seems like a good middle ground to do so, um, so that people are aware of the general subject matter of each section of the law and can then, you know, take it upon themselves. All you have to do is put it in Google and it'll pop up. Yeah, and that's a great yeah. Okay, so I'll revise that. Um, that'll, that should be a minor change. I'll just make it an attachment. And then I think we're scheduled to continue this public hearing next week, um, November 10th. Mm -hmm. So, I can circulate that in advance of this being made, of the agenda being circulated. And perhaps if the board has no other concerns, we can be in a position to end this very lengthy process that I believe started in July or August sure. and um, close the public hearing next week. That's great. Did the village vote on that? This is where that this law came from. Right. That's what I'm saying. It started with the village. Yeah. So the village was, is already it, done. It didn't come to us until it was done at the village okay. level, right? Yeah. I think it was adopted by the village sometime this time. All right. Next up, moving right along. Uh, although we closed the public hearing on this local law at our last meeting, we since learned which is the senior tax exemption that we spoke about. Um, we since learned that in Westchester County's law opting into the increased income limit limits for um real property tax exemptions that are available to senior citizens that um they are also allowing seniors to deduct unreimbursed medical expenses from their income to determine their eligibility for the exemption our town assessor's office will be the one responsible for administering the applications for the county 
in addition to the town, villages, and school districts. As such, we wanted to briefly discuss with the board if we should reopen the public hearing on this local law and consider adding a provision similar to the county law, allowing unreimbursed medical expenses to be deducted from a person's income, which would basically mean that we would have the same calculation as the county and we calculate our taxes uh, at the same time as the county. So they, I mean, they, they both go at it at the same time. Although overall the administration of this change will be an added responsibility on our assessor's office, it is something they will have to administer anyway for the county, so we will be able to maintain consistency in terms of eligibility across the tax and jurisdictions and help seniors continue to afford to live in our community um, to the best of our ability. Another way that government is really looking for you. Anybody uh, have any feelings on the subject? Or should we also add? That um, exempt those uh, exemptions in. I think we should, especially if we already have to do the work, the uh, calculations, or I think they're going to get a little complicated. <clears throat> figure out how to get all the unpaid, unreimbursed medical expenses figured out. But if we have to do it anyway, then any way we can support our seniors, um, I think it's good. There is actually a form RP four eight eight seven four six seven. Excuse me. Um, that property owners, when they're applying for the exemption, have to fill out, and there's already a question that specifically addresses um, reimbursed medical expenses. So hopefully, it will not be that challenging. Okay, so okay, it's just I think, so I think what we found out is that this exemption has actually been on the books uh, since what 2007. So yeah, so I went back at every version of this law that's been in effect. I only went back to 2007. Um, I looked at the 2001 version, it wasn't there. So somewhere between 2001 and 2007, this changed. Um, what's unique about this provision is there's actually a lot of concepts in the state law that dictate what's included in income and what's not included in income. What's unique about this is that it's left a local option. So kind of like what we were talking about in the concept of e-bikes, there's certain things local municipalities can control, certain things they can't. And here at the state level, they said, that the um, run reimbursed medical expenses can be reduced from your eligible income if the local government enacts an local, a local law to do so. Um, so it has been on the books for quite a while, at least going back to 2007. But I guess when the county was revisiting um, the scale of the income levels um, to revise their law to incorporate that, they also decided to incorporate this as well. Which again, I don't think it had been incorporated in the past. It had counted great. So Again, so um, we do know that it's it's in state law, and so it is probably likely that other counties have adopted it, and that, that other municipalities have enacted it elsewhere. So we're we're we've reached out to the county to ask them for some help and guidance, um, and hopefully they can get that from either other counties or other you know from the state. Um, in addition to this form in terms of how it's calculated and in terms of helping us um, do outreach to let um, seniors know about it. So um, we anticipate that we will be getting that um, soon. So there's a form that they're gonna be checking to see all their re reimbursed for medical expenses? I don't know. I saw, yeah, I saw number eight. It says if the deduction reimbursement medical and prescription expenses is right. the instruction, I just didn't go to the instruction part. Yeah, so I, I mean, it, it's yeah. a lot of these things, not just this specific issue, can be somewhat complicated, you know, in terms of calculating um, not only on the part of the assessor's office, but also on the part of the property owners who are seeking the exemption. So, um, but it's not, it's not something that, like um, Supervisor was saying, that it's a new concept or that we're starting from scratch. It is already, it is already contemplated. Um, so it's not something that the assessor's office is going to have to do separately um, from, you know, I guess, assisting property owners with how to fill out the forms. So anticipating that the finance commissioner is going to also give a chance to the assessor's association and speak with assessors to find out what it is exactly that they're going to do. Because now all of the assessors in Washington County are going to have to administer this. At least with respect to county tax. Right. right. Exactly. exactly. So we're not alone. Right, and if we have to already administer it, I mean, we may as well give our own seniors the benefit of the greater exemption, absolutely. Um, yeah, I just wanted to 
uh, and dealing with uh, helping people understand their medical dental benefits. Um, it's complicated and it's fun to explain to people. So I think they'll have fun. Okay, I'll just have your time. Is there any, any questions about it? Oh, yeah. yeah, all right, we're all ready for the fun. Oh, yeah. So what we'll have to do next at the November 10th meeting is call for another public hearing to be open. And the next legislation and legislative session after that would be December 13th. Um, just to be clear, the timing would not affect um, the ability to um, have this in place for next year because the taxable status date is May 1st. I know that our tests were uh, also already getting questions, so we'll at least just let them know that that's the direction that we're moving. Fantastic. All right, so up next, uh, we have a discussion about the intermunicipal agreement for fire protection services with the village box. And uh, the reason that we have this actually came to our attention from a, a local resident, I believe, who uh, looking looking at our um, what was our existing IMA with the village, it is a bit outdated our existing IMA with the Village of Austin. So the Village of Austin Corporation Council is currently drafting a new intermunicipal agreement, which would essentially codify the practices that have been in place since 1997. And it um, includes an automatic renewal provision to ensure that this doesn't happen again in the future. Um, so I'm gonna just turn it over to our town council, Chris uh, Ramadana, once again to add any details before we open it up for board for discussion. Yeah, so I have, um, as Supervisor said, um, the Villages Corporation Council is currently in the process of drafting it, um, a revised agreement, even though the automatic renewal will be um, beneficial so that, you know, there's carryover. Um, we do expect on both sides to see an opportunity, you know, for someone to opt out um, their either municipality to opt out during a certain period of time if they choose to do so, so that you're not locking in the municipality and pretty much indefinitely. Um, the other thing that is proposed to be reflected more accurately in the agreement is the price. Um, basically, Victoria can chime in as well. Um, my understanding is that the practice has been that from the time that the agreement was first entered into in, in the 90s, um, the price was about half of what current is it not currently pays because every year it would increase by the actual costs that are, are incurred by the village um, in providing the service. I believe it's a certain percentage that's attributable to the town. Wait, what do you mean it's half of what the town currently pays? I don't understand that. What was in the agreement in 1997? Oh, I see what you're saying. It's okay. half of what the town currently pays. I see, I see. Because mm -hmm. of the gradual increase. I understand. That okay, happening. I'm sorry. I just didn't understand. So, and this was something that I conveyed to the board in my email yeah. yesterday um, because I didn't want you to be shocked. Right, well, those five that, years. That it was $266,000, yeah. $228,000 in 1997, and now it's $566,000. So the proposed increase for next year that the Corporation Council indicated to enter the new agreement is 3.8 percent, which is which seems reasonable um, under the circumstances and given given what CPI has been doing lately. Um, so we'll just have to. Um, other than that, the, the feedback I've gotten from the village is that um, they intend to keep the agreement pretty much standard. Um, the agreement identifies the areas that the village covers. And distinguishes the areas that the village doesn't cover. So, um, and just to be clear, for those areas, the village prior to the fire department does cover those. Yes, it's not just that they're in the Um, so yeah, so the, it, it, it should be a real, relatively straightforward amendment. And, um, if necessary, we can have another discussion, or if the board is comfortable with these terms as presented, you know, when it comes. Assuming that there is nothing unexpected, we can put it on for resolution. I mean, the only thing I noticed is um, they have the set percentage of, you know, they think that the town is X amount of households um, as compared to the village. And um, as you spoke, they also paint that number. So I'm guessing it's accurate. Yeah, so it is accurate. We have used to about that this morning, okay. um, our, our controller. So it's a, a, a number based upon uh, there's a uh, special district 
um, the assessment level for those properties that are located in the unincorporated town of Austin that are covered by the Austin Fire Department. And so that special district can get pulled so you can see what the total assessed value of that you know, group of properties is in comparison to the village so we can determine the share of those costs for those households. So this is a practice that's been in place Okay, so and that's been done. done and that's place. been done annually or biannually. Yeah, that's been okay. doing. That's been happening for forever. It's just something that um, was was necessarily put in writing as much. Yeah. So the number that you you see in the budget that's uh, sitting in front of you is the calculation for 2023. The process that our finance office has been doing since since the the dawn. Okay. Awesome. Basically, okay, yes. And it's an accurate reflection. Correct. Okay. And, okay. and this, uh, the Corporation Council did indicate that there would be um, greater explanation in the new IMA about how that number is going to be calculated so that um, oh. it's in writing somewhere. Right. So practice written down. Right. And are we working on the similar one with Briarcliff? Yeah. The Briarcliff um, agreement, I think, is, is fairly it's not, it's not outdated. Okay. Yeah. Something that's provided for some of the options. Resolution. Um, I can wait until okay. the rest of the details come out in the IMA and then we can do it there. I mean, right off the bat, is there yeah. more? So, we'll have to wait and see. I'm, I've given you the information that was provided to me. I have no reason to expect anything different, but we absolutely, you know, if you circulate it to the board, we'll get it. Fantastic. I don't really remember. Something I can talk to Angela about. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, okay. Then that's it. Can I have a motion to adjourn the executive session for advice of counsel and personnel? Ooh, second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Next Tuesday, November 8th, is Election Day. So our next legislative session will take place on Thursday, November 10th, at 7.30 p.m. Please remember to get out and vote, either during early voting today until late. Okay, that's happened. And mm -hmm. every day this week through Sunday, November 6th, or on Election Day, November 8th. See you next Thursday. Have a great week, everybody.